Welcome everyone to the August meeting, August 2022 meeting of the Revitalization Trust Fund. And a uh, little uh, note here that- um, I think she was back. Okay. Oh, can you hear? Yes. Oh, we... Carol is back in. I can hear yeah. you. All right. Okay. All, All right. We had it. We had it on private. Private. Okay. Uh, okay. That's okay. About browser. We're back now. Yeah, we're we're good now. All right. All right. Yeah. So, uh, so this is the open meeting of the uh, Revitalization Trust Fund, and it's being conducted remotely, consistent with the governor Governor Baker's executive order of March twelfth, and extended several times. Um, due to the current due to state emergency of the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of COVID-19. Uh, we will allow public bodies to meet entirely remotely as long as reasonable public access, access is afforded uh, so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Um, ensuring public access does not ensure public participation uh, unless participation is required by law. And the last piece is, uh, please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, uh, be aware that other folks may be able to see you. Uh, take care not to share your screen or your computer or anything you would not like to broadcast into the report. All right, then. With that, we are off. So, first of all, welcome back. <laughs> uh, since we didn't have a meeting in July, um, this is sort of our foray into the uh, fall season. I, I know it's probably very uh, sad for me to even mention the word fall yet because we obviously want to remain in summer as long as we can. Um, but, uh, but we have a bunch of things that are uh, coming together and so let's get started. I'm going to uh, just swipe over here for a second. All right. So uh, let's start with uh, you, Brad. Could you uh, actually uh, give us a little report um, or any update, or just let us what, know what um, you might be working on to be able to get the Charles River Street cleanup done? Um, I, I, I think I mentioned to you in an email, I haven't had time to do anything with it yet, so we're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to start from scratch. Okay. Um, so hopefully at the, uh, at the September meeting, we can have some kind of game plan. And if we have, um, uh, cause I, cause basically we'll have uh, pretty much uh, September, possibly October to be able to get this done, which would be good because it's sort of the end of the summer of people throwing trash out the windows. And <laughs> so, so we're probably uh, going into a good time to be able to clean up uh, Charles River Street and uh, certainly enlist, uh, you know, as many people as we can to help with it. And, uh, you know, feel free to contact me. I will help connect you uh, in any way to whoever um, we need to uh, to be able to help out. Yeah. So, what what are your thoughts on who who all do we need to work with on this? Well, um, traditionally, um, as I'm told, for the a lot of the volunteer cleanups, that it's usually been uh, Park and Recreation uh, that have helped organize these. Um, okay. That, and the, the other uh, piece of it is the uh, DPW. They basically would like, from my uh, talking with them on previous things, that they would like a uh, um, just more of a heads up of what we would like their help with. Um, and then it's a matter of finding whatever organization or group, um, or if we organize it ourselves, uh, which is certainly possible. Um, that we can uh, just you know put it together, get a um, get an agreed upon date with them, and uh, then you know execute it. We should probably have two dates, and the fact that if it's uh, you know if it's raining the day that we want to do it, we just have a, a second uh, rain date. But I think I think that should be uh, the way that it could work. Um, Amy, if you have any uh, you know other input or thoughts on how to do this, so uh, if we just organize it ourselves and then connect it to BPW, does that work? Yeah, it, you just keep in touch with them and, and make sure they have enough advance notice to be able to accommodate any pickup of, of bags and that sort of thing. Yeah, in this particular case, because of the uh, type of road that it is, uh, one of the problematic uh, 
things about, about cleaning it is the fact that you really need a DPW truck and crew, or, or at least one or two people, uh, there protecting the people who are walking on the side of the road to be able to, um, uh, you know, to be able to make sure that it's done uh, safely. There are sections of the road where you can walk off to the side, um, but there are also a number of sections where, you know, you would have to have some type of uh, control over uh, traffic. Um, or police, uh, police detail or whatever. Yeah, some, something that would basically make it safe to do the volunteer. Okay. And I'm sure that DPW, you know, if you talk to uh, to Ryan Coylan, um, or you talk to actually talk to Karis, it's actually the, um, the person you should speak to about it, uh, and uh, see what she has to say about it. If we, you know, if we work to be able to organize a group of people, you know, through whatever connections we have, um, then you know, how would she like to be able to organize uh, the connection? With Karis Lester. If you haven't met Sorry, her before, you, you, you cut out what you were saying the name. Uh, Karis, C-A-R-Y-S, and it's Lustig, L-U-S-T-I-G. Okay, perfect, got it. All righty then, on to the next. So um, Mary Ruth obviously hasn't been able to make it yet, but um, the uh, well, we've made some significant progress on newsletter. And so we should have a, uh, a working newsletter ready to kick off in September. Um, I did, uh, I took the information that she had and I took some of the information that I have. Um, I went into the system and, and formatted, uh, formatted, a, uh, <laughs> formatted, uh, oh, the, uh, formatted a newsletter um, type of, uh, document uh, that is in the, um, the system that will allow us to be able to do direct emails to people. Um, and it's tied into the emails that we have in the system so far. Uh, so um, I just want to basically uh, get together with her, go through um, you know what I've put together from the things that she supplied and, and from what I did and uh, see what she thinks. And then what we'll do is we'll send out a um, uh, like a you know, a preliminary uh, newsletter to all of you so that you can look at it, make some comments, uh, and, uh, you know, see if there's anything that we've left out that we should really make sure we get in. Uh, part of the concept of it is we're trying to be able to focus this um, as specifically as possible on, um, you know, individual projects or, or things that we'd like to be able to raise uh, funds for. Uh, because that way we can actually approach people uh, from the newsletter. Um, we are, uh, should be very shortly being able to put up the banner on the square plaza and the uh, wall mural, wall, you know, uh, applicable uh, mural uh, thing on the, uh, on the wall where the art gallery would be so that we would have, ideally, all these things roll out all about the same time so people see it from many different angles. So we'll give you an update on that, but we're uh, basically pretty far down the road in terms of being able to get this thing finished and, uh, and we'll definitely kick it off in September. All right. Any other, any other questions or thoughts about the um, newsletter? All right. I let you know about the banner in the application, so that's all good to go. Well, uh, do you have an expected uh, launch date for the newsletter? Uh, well, I would say going? I would say by September fifteenth, if not sooner. And any thoughts on? Okay, great. And maybe some communication about that on our social. I don't know. A social media page like Facebook or um, actually, um, yes. In fact, Mary Ruth um, is uh, said that she would once we once we uh, produce the newsletter that she was going to 
uh, also connected not only to uh, our to uh, I guess Needham MA, MA, but also um, connected to uh, a list that she has of people um, that she thought would be you know in town and be, would be interested in being able to uh, to get on the list also. And if we have one of the things that we're you know obviously going to encourage is every time we produce one of these um, and you know this the you know, working on being able to do things right into the you know, holiday season, um, we would do it at least uh, at least every month. That uh, any of uh, any of us that have you know mailing lists to, uh, you know, of people who live in Needham, uh, you know, obviously forwarding it to them and encouraging them, that, you know, and telling them about the fact that you're you know part of the, the revitalization trust fund, and here's one of the projects that we're looking for. To uh, the fund that's ready to ready to go, and look for their input. And, you know, we'll be updating them on future projects and that kind of thing if they sign up to the new one. Yeah, I remember I I sent an email out. Um, it was like a year and a half ago, I think, towards the holiday season, of, to request just really to uh, a number of our my neighbors on my street to, to, to donate to the need to the NCRTF. So, um, I mean, a lot of those email addresses could be added to the list that we have, I think. Okay, great. Well, if you, if, um, if you want to send them to me, uh, that, um, we can, you know, add that to the list as long as you feel that these people would be comfortable receiving something from us. And all of these emails have an opt-out option with the bottom mask. Okay. Uh, Paul, quick sidebar on the Eaton Square wall, if we could. Yes. You had, um, you had mentioned potential renderings. I don't know if those are available. I still want to I want to reprice the brickwork that needs to be done and potentially with the renderings, I could even price um, some painting. Cause I think that you mentioned something about like a strip being painted across the middle. So as to sort of frame the, the wall where the art's going to be. So I, maybe we could drill that down and I could, I could start getting pricing on that if we're going to be moving forward. Sure. I mean, it's good to get uh, more updated pricing, and that would be fantastic. So, if you've uh, got the red, the rendering would help, that, or even what's wh where the rendering is today. Maybe it's not completed, but even oh, it's, inter it's iterations of the rendering. Yeah, yeah. No, it's we have a complete rendering of the wall um, for as a final rendering of just what it would look like. Okay. And, and so, um, if that's accessible somewhere, you could email it to me. That would help, sort of. Yeah. I, I just made a note to be able to send it off to you. So. Perfect. Uh, so you should have it tomorrow. Okay, great. That's great. And then as far as timing on that work, is that sort of whenever we're on the same page about pricing, we can pull the trigger and at least get the work prep started? Or are we waiting for approvals? Do we need permitting? What's the situation? Just so I can sort of have all the information. Yeah, everything's fully approved. All we have to do is have the money to, to fund the project. Okay. So at the moment we have all, all the funds to be able to fund it, because um, we don't want to go into the project and do part of it and then not be able to finish it. Right. So, so what um, we've done based on previous pricing um, was put together what the total cost of the project would be, including the first four shows for the art gallery. Um, so that we have, you know, have it all, uh, you know, basically we come out of the gate already um, ready to be able to put out shows. Yep. And at the same time, that gives us the lead time to be able to rally artists and assemble the um, curation committee uh, and, you know, those other pieces, um, which takes some time to be able to put together. Sure. So by having the shows ready, um, we could change them quarterly and we have basically a 12 month period if we needed to, to be able to um, get the committee in place, get the process refined. Uh, and so on. So that's the whole 
idea. We're not just, you know, we're not going to just jump into it and say, okay, now we're sure. to do. <laughs> now, do you have a paragraph or a write up or some sort of like marketing that I could use to blast out email to, to try to raise some money? Yes, we have. Um, I have a complete project detail and um, I have a video okay. uh, that I shot at the wall. Uh, so both of those things I can send you. Great. I mean, I've got a you know handful of people in mind that I could um, hit up, if you will, um, that, I, that will probably donate and maybe even start spreading the word. So I just want the proper material to put in front of them. I will send that also. I should be able to pull all that stuff from where I am. And if not, I would certainly get it for next week. If it's not accessible to me, right? Like okay. In beautiful Indiana. <laughs> or in the internet, I mean. That's fantastic. So I will send that off. And, um, you know, for uh, any of you who have, you know, who have mailing lists, again, of people, you know, friends, other, other families that you know and meet them, um, you know, as we kick off this with the newsletter and be able to and a place for people to opt in to be able to join, uh, you know, the newsletter, uh, and we have these uh, two displays that are going to go up, <clears throat> all talking about the, the art gallery. Uh, that uh, you know, as much push as we can as we go into September, October, November, uh, for donations to be able to fund this project. I mean, the the goal really has been to be able to to, get, to secure the funding for. The art gallery and for the the um, uh, Ridge Hill Walmart. Uh, that total is about about one hundred and thirty thousand dollars, and so of the, with the two of them together. Right now, we're, you know, we're going to obviously revisit the estimates on the uh, uh, for a third time <laughs> to yeah. uh, to make sure that we've got to nail down because of all the changes that have gone on. Certainly. Um, but uh, the um, art gallery is approximately an $85,000 project. Um, the uh, Richard Wall mural is about a $25,000. So, and they're both, you know, obviously they're both, both very high visibility. Um, and I believe will be, you know, very high impact in terms of, you know, positive experience and, uh, and connecting people to, you know, a variety of different things, including being able to help more foot, you know, ultimately help uh, create more foot traffic in the downtown uh, because people will come from other places to be able to see these types of things. And the artists, you know, just one other aspect of this is that when artists are displaying in the gallery, that they're going to be mailing to their lists to tell people that they're displaying in the gallery. And, uh, you know, if we uh, work this properly, that we, you know, can encourage them to be able to, you know, not only have them come visit and see their art, but of course, stop into the restaurants and have something to eat and shop the stores. And, and uh, you know, I, I'm not, this is, you know, very early stages of it, but just the concept of being able to even tie some things in, um, that incentivize people that might come from the stores themselves, uh, that when they come to visit, you know, they would get a coupon or some kind of thing like that for the restaurant or for the store. But that's that's totally an aside point. That's just like, keep it in the back of our mind. Once we get this up and running, <clears throat> there'll be an evolution of things that, you know, that will come out of this and we'll just see what seems like the best you know, the best things to leverage uh, this exciting project. Paul, I just wanted to chime in. Um, I actually started and I got sidetracked with other projects, but um, I had gotten, I have the list, the comprehensive list of everybody that has contributed to the NCR TF um, in an Excel spreadsheet. And we had talked about circulating that among the, um, the committee so that everybody can familiarize themselves with sort of who the past donors have been, which might spark some ideas for um, either new donors like, oh, I don't see 
you know, ABC company on this list? Has anybody ever approached them? That sort of thing. But also maybe there's some donors that gave at one point and have fallen off the radar for whatever reason. And somebody in this committee might have a personal connection with them and, and can touch base and say, you know, hey, you, you've been a longtime contributor and we've got these great projects coming up, that sort of thing. So my point being is that I will make it a point to finish that over the next week or two um, and have that ready for our September meeting. That's fantastic. That'll be a huge help and that'll help us really be able to, to um, I think, really connect uh, in a focused way to the people who have don been donors in the past. Um, you know, and also in addition to, you know, to helping fill the gap between the people that we have emails for, which will reach through the newsletter, and the people that other people will know, but we don't have email addresses for them. So we don't have really a way of being able to, other than sending postcards or things like that, we don't really have a way of being able to reach them. And certainly, if the more people we know that know people on this list that had donated, um, the more ability we have to have a personal connection through someone else, <laughs> which you know helps expand the network. Also, you know, the larger our network can become with this, you know, uh, you know, this medium, that the more opportunities we'll have to do more projects and to be able to fund things uh, more quickly. So, this is this is great. Thank you, Andy, for all the work mm -hmm. that's to be able to do that. I know that's a, that's it's. It's a huge thing, and I have a stack of uh, papers that I'm still calling, calling through and entering emails uh, from whenever I can, uh, whenever I, you know, whichever ones have them. Um, so we're continually building the list on the backside uh, from anything that's available from that. One. So that's great. Any other questions on on this? Uh, looks like Carol, you're still muted. You need. Nope. Um, am I on? Am I yeah. on now? Yes. Oh gosh. This is this <laughs> is my this is my brand new iPad. So it's done different things. Anyway, uh, I was wondering about uh, on the list that you have how far back they went. Well, the the uh, uh, Amy's list, or are you talking about mine? Of uh, what Amy found. Okay. I'd have to go back and check, but it's, it's several years. Mm -hmm. It goes back okay. quite a ways. Okay. Yeah, because we, uh, I can go check too to see uh, if the ones I have more the first five years. Uh, see if what we can find. Yeah, let me um, let me dig it up again. It's been several weeks since I've looked at it. Sure. So let me let me see how far back it goes, and okay. if we're missing that, then we can maybe piece together what you have as right. well. Right. Yeah, I will help do that. I'll okay. let you know directly if I find two. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. So just a, um, our next item is about the bike rack and its relocation. Well, I, I, sad to report that uh, someone unknown relocated it to wherever they are because it's, uh, uh, it's basically missing from the shelf. I went out actually to collect it <laughs> with the hope that, that I could Put it in a safe place and uh, when I got out there that spot where it was um, a few weeks before oh someone oh, took it that's what it appears I called um, both oh. the TPW and uh, and Ed Olson and I talked to Ryan and Ed Olson neither knew anything about it being moved under any circumstances and my fear is that someone Probably a scrapper. Saw it and took it. Saw it and said, "Oh, yeah, I can get a lot of money for being able to just from from the iron." And uh, 
and I can see it. So, unfortunately, uh, it's just uh, unless it turns up that uh, relocating it is not an option. So, at some mm -hmm. point, if we want to be able to create something for the heights uh, that was along that line, we can certainly choose to do that. But uh, that's the scoop of it. Well, you have pictures of it. Maybe if we raise extra money one time, we could do a replica of it or something. Sure. I mean, it was it was actually it was custom made to uh, be modeled after the gates of Town Hall. You know, right. Dutch curls on the top and, and so on. And the, you know, at, at, as far as I know, the the, uh, the gentleman who actually built it uh, is still in business. So we're working on. Uh, you know, we could, we could certainly do. I have to, I obviously, we'd have to go out and reprice it and, <laughs> and, and see what we want to do as far as I can. Mm. Or there may be something else. I mean, you know, there may be something else that we could put together that would be a great addition um, to the heights uh, that, you know, adds some other, you know, uh, point of, of art and feature to, to the heights that they would really enjoy. So uh, that's something we can talk about. But anyway, that's the, that's the scoop of that. Uh, the good news is we don't need to re raise the, uh, the the funds to be able to re relocate it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> that's the rest. Um, so next, something incredibly exciting, um, Jessica. I uh, would just like to take the lead on uh, on the new uh, profiles and uh, the cool stuff that you've been putting together for that. And in the meantime, I'll give you just very quickly uh, an update that um, the profile, the next profile, which is um, uh, Bob Larson, Robert Larson, um, is at uh, Speed Pro to be able to uh, get it, um, you know, put the, uh, ready for printing. And um, the only thing that, that uh, basically has to happen is when we uh, turn over the Sunita Williams one, uh, that uh, I'll just put in a new link to uh, a new story on the QR code. And I've contacted the, uh, the Needham channel and they're looking into their archives to see if they have any interviews with Bob. Um, so we're trying to find something like that. If in the next week or so, they don't find anything like that, I'm gonna uh, uh, reach out to uh, Gloria Grice uh, the, uh, um, people wanted to call it the Stark Society. It's it's the History Museum and uh, uh, and center and and to get the uh, to see if they uh, would like to be able to put together you know, to shoot a little video or I can go down and film them to shoot a little video uh, that basically tells the story about um, Bob Larson and some of his contributions and if possible we might be able to get a little. You know, a little interview with him um, if he's up there. So that's uh, that's the scoop of that. And now on to the future profiles. And uh, Jessica, you're on. Okay. Um, everyone can hear me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. So um, at Paul's suggestion, I drafted. Um, a uh, profile of Bert and John Jacobs, who are two brothers who grew up in Needham and founded the Life is Good Company, which I'm sure everyone has seen the t-shirts. They're pretty popular. Um, so they they grew up in Needham and um, their story is pretty interesting. I couldn't find a whole lot of content. So that biography is a little on the short side. Um, I also drafted one about Governor Baker, who obviously lived in Needham and is a graduate of Needham High School. A um, lot more content about him, actually almost too much. I, that biography is a little too long, I think. Um, so I think both of them I need to work on a little more. Um, and I do want to figure out a way to fact check them if no other way than by the people themselves um, who I'm profiling, if they're still you know, alive and with us or maybe a member of their family um, can read them and fact check them. I just wanna make sure I don't put anything up there that isn't true, um, obviously. Um, so, so one of them's a little too short, the other one's a little too long. I'm still kind of working on the editing and I need to figure out um, how to fact check them, but um, you know, it's going, it's going pretty well. I still, um, 
you know, after those two, I think I'll draft one on Frank Malzone, who was a third base, uh, third baseman for the Red Sox, actually lived on my street. Um, very nice gentleman. He's no longer alive, but I'm sure he has family members I could speak to. Um, so I'll just work my way through the list um, or through the, the list of ideas. Um, what I'm trying to do is get sort of a, a broad spectrum of areas that people, you know, have done this work in. So with Sanuta Williams, we have uh, space exploration with Bob Larson. We have art. Um, we have um, the jazz musician that I wrote the previous biography for. There's music there. Governor Baker is politics, obviously. Um, the Jacobs brothers is business. Um, so I'm trying to I'm trying to get a um, spectrum, if I can, of different areas that people work in. I'm also really trying to sort of walk the line between celebrating, you know, the accomplishments of, of the people who come from Needham without sounding like their PR team. I don't want to overdo overdo it and sound like I'm, I don't know, somehow <laughs> selling them, and, you know, in some way that maybe is not appropriate. So I'm, I'm trying to be neutral, um, but still sort of um, tell the story of, of the, some of the things that they've accomplished and what their connection to Needham is. So, um, yeah, so, I mean, that's about it. Um, you know, anytime I think that you're talking about a politician. I mean, politics is inherently controversial, I think. Um, governor Baker is obviously a really popular governor, and I, I don't think he's generally a controversial person, but you never know. Um, so, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to sound like um, we're endorsing any particular political stance on any issue or anything like that. So I'm still kind of working on all of that to get that tone right. Um, but that's, that's about where I am. So I'll keep working on those drafts. I'm also looking for images on the internet that might um, look good on the mural. Um, you know, I noticed on Sunita's that there were several images. I don't know that I can find that many for some of the people that I'm writing about. Um, but anyway, I'll keep I'll keep working on it. So if anyone has any comments, you know, I, I circulated those drafts earlier this week. Um, you know, please let me know. I'm not overly attached to any of this. Um, I actually would love the feedback and, um, you know, if anyone has any suggestions or thinks something needs to be changed or, or whatever, um, please do tell me. Um, I'm not, I'm not overly uh, married to any of it. I actually like being edited. So, so that's about it. That's wonderful. Um, the, uh, I was going to say one of the things um, that we want to start to do if we can is to be able to um, uh, is to be able to get uh, this, the images together for uh, Tiger's Hour. Um, we had uh, sort of uh, slated uh, his profile as being the next one. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so we want to make sure that we're starting to, to assemble those images. Um, so uh, if you have you know, uh, trouble doing that, um, uh, let me know because uh, he's obviously connected with Berkeley. Um, I'd be happy to call over there and if I went there <laughs> and, uh, um, and you know, work my way through to be able to get that, you know, connected um, for those kinds of things. I'm sure that they, in their own media department, uh, have images of him. Uh, and how, how would you like how would you like me to present them? Just, you know, print them and basically note where they came from on the web. I mean, I, I don't know how. Yes. Uh, what's the yeah, basically, okay. if you can just, if you can just, uh, uh, you know, give us the links to those images, then we can track down um, if there's, uh, you know, things that we need to get the rights to. Uh, you know, there are a couple of the, like the Sunita Williams ones that we had to pay for the rights to be able to uh, reproduce them. Uh, in high resolution. So that's, you know, that's an expected thing. Okay. So, uh, and it usually it doesn't cost much to be able to get those rights, but they're, you know, we have to, uh, we want to be able to always use high resolution images for it as best as we possibly can. So, yeah. Okay, great. Send, send, the, send the links and uh, I'll uh, pursue whatever we need to to be able to work it. And working with the graphic artist, I'll, you know, he'll look also and say, okay, uh, this one is high enough resolution, but this one's not, so let's find out. So, okay. okay, sounds okay. good. Any other uh, comments from the committee on uh, on the profiles? Any other thoughts or things you want to be able to keep in mind as we go forward? One of the, obviously one of the things I have to mention is um, promoting the sponsorship 
of this. And uh, one of the things that we uh, definitely need to do and figure out a strategy for is uh, getting these uh, profiles up on Facebook uh, with a connection to um, uh, donate so that we can encourage people to be able to become sponsors for, uh, for this profile. And all the profiles at a minimum um, will be up 30 days, but uh, we're actually, uh, I'm sure too, um, uh, will be up a quarter, so 90 days. Um, so that's a, you know, that's, uh, you know having your, your name on one of these profiles for three months uh, in a very public space with a lot of foot traffic that walks by, uh, and as well as traffic stopping, uh, you know, is a pretty good visible thing for, you know, people who want an incentive to be able to you know, not only do a good thing, but also get a little, um, you know, recognition for the company or the individual. So uh, think about ways that we might be able to, uh, to really start, um, you know, doing a promotion for that. We'll obviously incorporate that into the newsletter also, in terms of sponsoring profiles. But uh, as we said, one of the values of having uh, these profiles of Jessica and things that are um, starting to get in, you know, in the can, basically, is that it allows us to be able to say, and here are upcoming profiles, would you like to sponsor any of these? And because of the variety of things, you know, it's, it's easier for people to be able to sort of wrap their, their head around, uh, you know, an individual person and a profile. Uh, rather than just saying, you know, I would sponsor some profile by somebody. <laughs> so, uh, so as we continue to build out these profiles, we can have people have a selection of things and, and they can choose. So my hope is that that will be, uh, you know, an effective way of being able to keep ahead and be able to stay on schedule to do, you know, uh, have four changes per year. Any other thoughts about that? Comment about Gloria. Gloria has a fantastic memory of a lot of people. Uh, yeah. And, and she she could really help with you know, Jessica getting information. Yes. And, uh, Great. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, yeah. It would be good for you just to call her and talk to her. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, I had mentioned to her um, that uh, you might be calling her. And, and she I said, you know, because this is sort of the thing. She goes, this is really our thing. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so, uh, so I'm sure she would be delighted to be able to talk to you about uh, the different people that you're working on. And you've got the list that we've got. Um, so, um, you know, so have, if you consulted with her as to which, which one she thought might be uh, the, uh, you know, create the type of, of mix that you, you have just described. Uh, so we have people from the past, we have people from the current, we have you know, arts and science and the different types of things. Um, but also she may know that she has resources that would make it much easier to do some people than others. And obviously, you know, we point in those directions first, uh, just to make the process, to, you know, to really get the program off the ground and, and uh, accumulate more sponsors, which will help us in terms of how we spend work. Then we can spend time on the ones that are maybe more difficult if we, uh, you know, want to be able to do those, because uh, we have the time. So. Great. All right. So. End it here. Yeah. Um, so another thing that came along, um, which is great, is uh, um, I was contacted by um, uh, Plugged In Ban because uh, they would like to do a banner for Chapel Street. And so if um, I end up, if I can be able to share my screen, I can show you the banner because one of the things we wanted to do is, to, you know, the first part, part of the process after they created the design is for us to be able to look at it, comment, and see if we, uh, you know, just see anything that we might have built it or, or we think that it's, you know, they've done a great job and sort of 
that's the next step before we uh, so before I'll take it to the uh, select board and uh, uh, for their approval. They're talking about doing uh, this, uh, putting up this banner in March. So we've got a lot of lead time, uh, but uh, you know, being way ahead of them is, is a good thing. Um, just one on, on another note on the side is that um, the uh, Medium Diversity Initiative is uh, uh, working on a banner right now that they would like to have up in October. So tune in for, um, for an email that will you know, send it around for any comments um, so that I can potentially get it into uh, a select board meeting. Um, obviously as soon in September as I can. But I think, and actually I think I just uh, saw an email uh, that came in just a little while ago that uh, was, a, was a first draft of the, of the banner. So they're actively working so let me uh, see if I can share screen. Mm -hmm. That's my. Uh, Mother-in-law's 94th birthday. <laughs> All right. So let's see if we let me scroll. Well, it's not letting me scroll, which is really All right, he's catching up. So, let's see if I can slowly. Can you all see this? Mm -hmm. Plugged in, yeah. Plugged in band program. That's the band. There, um, you know, obviously their logo is is an eye-catching graphic to begin with, um, and on the white background, I think it'll catch a lot of people's eyes. And the fact that they, I think, one of the things that I thought was really um, nicely done about this is that that they just basically spelled out what they do, so that anybody who is interested in the program <laughs> can know. You know, they don't have to even go and look anything up. They know right away this is what it is. So if they want it, they can even just search on plugged in Dan and uh, and find all the you know the website and all the information. But they do have the uh, plugged in Dan uh, you know URL at the bottom of the of the end. But tell me what you think. Hmm. Looks good. Others, Jessica? I think it looks nice. It's really straightforward. I mean, maybe they want to add a QR code that brings them right to the website, but other than that, it's pretty straight. I like it too. I think it looks good. It's easy to read. It's, mm -hmm. um, but it catches the the orange catches your attention. I think it's good. What size does this end up at? This is um, you know the uh, uh, forty eight by twenty three and a half. This okay. is the Chapel Street yep. uh, you know, banner showcase. Mm -hmm. mm. Marcus, if you're still in there, I'm still here. I'm going to keep my eyes on the road. Be safe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I did. I, I, I was. I, I, yeah, was, I, I, was saying, I was saying that almost jokingly since I knew you could. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, I, I, I did see it. I, I have the phone propped up here. I, I did take a quick look at it. I uh, did it safely. It looks really oh. good. I think with others, I think the QR code mention is really a, a good suggestion. All right. 
the uh, the one thing with the QR code, at least on this uh, for um, for this, is that um, I'm just we're we're just kicking off the first use of the QR code with the bracket down below to be able to scan it um, at the Eaton Square Plaza. So. Um, well, what I can do is, is since we have some time on this one, um, I can ask him about it. And uh, this might be able to, since it's gonna be March, um, that this might be the first one that we kick off on Chapel Street. Uh, one, basically the way that, just to recap, that um, when we went to design review, uh, to talk about the, uh, the concept of using these QR codes and you know having a way of being able to scan them as a as a uh, vestry that um, they would like us to be able to use on Ch on Chapel Street um, to have just one pole that has the lower uh, QR code so that one obviously there are five of these every other pole down Chapel Street. And so we can determine which one we think is probably the most uh, likely that people would notice the QR code, maybe right outside of um, uh, the restaurant uh, or something like that, so that there's more people coming out to it. But um, we can uh, we'll, we'll work out the logistics of that. But basically, there would be uh, two QR codes that would be just on Chapel Street. One would be for, the, for one series, and the other one would be for the other series. So we're not, you know, putting these all the way down this, you know, the, the pole. We want to get the attractiveness, um, but get to that, add to the uh, functionality. So, so I will I will mention that to them. Uh, they would have to obviously have to incorporate that into the design, um, but maybe they can just do a uh, sort of a Plan B version of it, uh, and. Uh, if the uh, you know QR code thing is ready to go, then you know when we go to actually uh, get the approval, then we could approve whichever one is the one that they would prefer to do. It's certainly very easily read. Yeah, yeah. I think you know they they basically knew that they basically took the heart to fifty foot away rule. <laughs> yeah. Is there only one summer camp? Or is there multiple programs? Because that's the only thing that's not plural. Just wondering if maybe they want to make think, it camps so it goes with everything else. But if it's just one camp, then maybe you don't pluralize it. I don't know. Just a thought here. Okay. Well, I will ask them. If we're really nitpicking. Great. All right, I'm glad I can show that to you. And we will. Uh... <clears throat> that's, that's it for um, for what I have uh, for yeah. the agenda. Carol, do you have any other thing you think? And anyone else? Anything else you would like to bring up, bring up or talk about? And, uh... No, the only thing I wanted just to confirm that uh, we can have at this point remote meetings allowed through March of 2023. That's correct. And uh, our next meeting would be September 22nd, this month, this year. <laughs> Great. Well, anything, Amy, that, that uh, we should know about uh, in terms of um, you know, you, you spoke, uh, I was at the NBA meeting this morning and there were, uh, when we talked, part of the focus of the meeting was talking about the uh, uh, renovations on Town Common. Mm -hmm. um, are there any things that you want to be able to share with the committee just for their, you know, knowledge and understanding? Um, I would say, uh to keep up with town related matters if you haven't already signed up for the town's newsletter. 
please do so. I'll send in, uh, a link in an email to everyone, but it comes out every Thursday morning and provides important updates on what's going on with the town, including the town renovation project. In a nutshell, the original plan was to have that project wrapped up by the end of 2022. We keep hearing about um, supply chain issues. Well, that in fact is impacting the ability for this project to be done by the end of the year. Steel that they need for the outdoor um, shade structures has been back ordered by several weeks. Um, they are slowly getting some work done as far as underground utility work. Um, but, you know, if, if you go by and you say, well, gosh, they don't seem to be making all that much progress. There's, there's a rhyme and reason to, to all of it as far as needing to do things in certain order. Uh, so the plan is to have it reopened to the public in spring of 2023. Okay. So unfortunately it will not be available for any kind of uh, event congregating to light the blue tree this winter. Uh, the blue tree will be lit, but it, there won't be actually any kind of ceremony around the area. We are having conversations right now at the town level as far as what to do in place of that, whether something happens um, you know, at Greensfield or whether it happens in Needham Heights, um, that information will be forthcoming but we're in, in active conversations about that right now. So that's about me. all I have as far as updates from the town at this point. Okay. Well, great. Well, any, any other comments or, uh, or thoughts from any of you guys? And, uh... All righty then. Well, then I uh, would like to uh, uh, propose that we close today's meeting of the Revitalization Trust Fund. Do we have a second? Second. All right. All in favor? <laughs> all righty then. Well, thank you all. It's been wonderful. And uh, we will we'll catch up on the uh, the five. Uh, multiple notes here, so we can. Well, I'll, get, I'll get to work on the uh, the different things that I've got for you. Um, and uh, obviously, feel free to contact me on any of the things you need some help or want to get some momentum on. And we'll uh, keep rolling forward. So, down that. Great. Thank you tremendously. Thank you, Amy, as always. And uh, we will see you next month. Great. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye everybody. Bye, bye, everyone.